Greetings. Welcome to September's 3 for Free Tarot Tuesday here on my channel. For those of you who are joining me for the first time, the third Tuesday of the month for this year, uh, possibly, <laughs> I am offering three free three card readings to three lucky subscribers who send me information. Um, you can find the details of this below in the description box if you wish to participate. But these these readings are offered free as a as a service, yes, but as a teaching tool. It's meant to be a teaching tool for everyone. Because I'm using um, the simple three card readings to show you the process of how I might go through a reading or how I might assign questions to my three cards. This is in celebration of the 50 year anniversary of me having my um, first uh, and favorite um, tarot deck, my Hoi Polloi deck, which I bought 50 years ago before I was married. And um, um, for many years, it was my only deck. And I realized this year it was 50 years that I've had it. So I thought I would celebrate by offering these readings. I do readings um, professionally. If you're interested in getting a free reading from me, um, you can find the information for that on my website. But this is just for our for fun today, for benefit, for, for fun. And also for hopefully, hopefully the three people that have submitted their information to me and their questions, perhaps we can help them a little bit, give them a little bit of information that maybe they can use. Okay, I'm using three different decks today. Um, some you've seen before, some when I think it's new, it's uh, new to me, and um, we'll see how that goes. I try to be very um, conscientious about my selection of the decks to suit the question or, or what I think might suit my best answer the question that we're asking. My first um, reading today is for a woman and we are going to call her, um, to respect her privacy today, we'll be calling her Jane B. Jane B, this is your reading. And Jane B writes to me about um, the fact that she feels that she's been struggling with um, self-confidence. She has some self-confident um, insecurities, um, problems with self-esteem that she's struggled with for a long time. And um, she so often doubts herself or, you know, wonders if she's good enough. She's concerned about how she can go on in the future, uh, how this is going to affect her with some of the um, challenges she might be facing in the future. So in order for me to answer her questions to the best of my ability, I did a needle chart, a very quick needle chart on her to find out her three, uh, the big three of her needle chart. That would be her sun sign, her rising sign, and her moon sign. And um, I used those to give me a little bit of information since I don't know Jane B and I don't have her in front of me as a querent. I can use that information that's, that's given to me from the birth chart to see a little bit how, how she might see herself, how others might see her, and how she might react to things, um, her emotional reactions, perhaps to things. Um, so for her, since it's a, a um, kind of a struggle with a, a situation in her life, she's a little struggled, I thought, and I'm looking at her age, and she's she's a mature woman, and I'm thinking, you know, I've had so many people um, who have been expressed so much fondness with this with the deck I have here, the um, the tarot of what is it called, the Force of Enchantment tarot um, that I've read. For, it's I wish I had stock in this. I guess if you could in this deck, because I want to tell you, I have read. Everybody that has ever seen me read with this deck has purchased the deck. <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to sell it, but it's a, it's a nice deck to read. I particularly love to read it because it it gives us a lot of life lessons, but it gives us some inf good information and a very, um, I think, a very uh, easy to understand, very safe kind of delivery of the answers, I think. I feel. I feel. So let's... Uh, Maybe because of the familiar characters. Um, you know, from, from fairy tales from when we were young, often them are often they are depicted in, in some way or some of the stories. 
So anyway, without further ado, let's get on with um, the reading for Jane B. Okay. The spread that I chose today for Jane B, um, the three card spread I used was something that uh, that is often called what you can change, what you cannot change, and what you may not be aware of. Those are the three cards. And I laid them out this last laid number one, what you can change, I put here, what you cannot change here, and what you may not be aware of, I put here, I put it above. For right now, I'm going to call it above. It's above here. Because something, something that you're just not thinking about or whatever. So um, I love this. I love the deal of what came up for, for Jane B because this is a good example of something that comes up in my classes, the issue. It deals with the issue that comes up in my classes. Because number one is what you can change. In, just by asking the question what you can change, it infers that you're um, wanting to change something that is a negative it's negative. And here we see the six of spells in this position. The six of spells is the equivalent to the six of wands card in the Rider Waite. And um, this card is normally thought of as something very positive. As a matter of fact, I pulled the six of wands from my from my Hoi Polloi deck. And this is the image that we're most care that we're most familiar with a lot of us who read the Rider Waite Smith cards. And the six of wands is, is a a period of, you know, it's a celebration period, a period where you have you have achieved um, recognition for something that you have done. You've done something, you've gotten the recognition, right? And we can see here in the Six of Spells, we do see the same thing. Here we see th this man has, um, he's hatched. I don't know if you can see from the lighting, I hope so. But there's a little wyvern that has come out of the egg and he has managed to hatch it. And everybody's in awe of his success because that's not an easy thing to do, apparently. Um, so he feels so good and his, his confidence is there. And that's a very, very positive thing. Why would we want to change that? Why would that be something we want to change? Well, I was looking at your, at your um, Jane, I was looking at your natal chart. And I see that your moon is in Leo. And as a, someone who has a moon in Leo, you tend to perhaps, and I forgive me if this does not apply to you, I just have to go on. I have to go on your on your birth chart, but it it is normally a person who tends to really crave the attention. Um, that their self confidence and esteem is very much tied to the attention that they get from whatever others think of them about them. You know, like they like to do things um, and get get credit for. It. We all do, but their self esteem is very much tied to that. And if your question is going to be about um, the problem with self-esteem or the or problem with confidence in yourself or, or thinking that, you know, you're good enough. And if it's completely tied to what others think about you, that can be a very negative thing. So this is why we might want to change this. We might want to think, um, why are you judging your worth based on what other people think about you? Your self-worth should not be dependent on other people judging your worth. And that is one of the things that moon people who have their moon in Leo often, often um, struggle with, because if people are not don't don't think them worthy, or they're not in a position where they have that the situation where people are around them, and maybe, and maybe, you know, you're not in the position where you're around your peers, or they they can be in the position to always tell you how good you are or to share your accomplishments. Maybe you're alone now. Maybe you're not even in a work situation or you don't have a lot of friends around you. A lot of us are more isolated than we were in the past due to um, due to the nature of COVID, etc. cetera. Um, so um, the question here would be, we want to change this perhaps. And the question I have for you, Jane, is to consider, consider what do you feel that you could accomplish? What do you think, that, what do you feel you can do to accomplish um, things without the praising of your peers, the praise of your peers. How about praising it yourself? How about looking at what you yourself find worthy of accomplishment, worthy of, you know, tune into yourself, tune into yourself, what you think of yourself. And that's the key to this. You know, if you are struggling with self-confidence because you don't have people around you or your self-worth, 
if the only judge you have right now is yourself and you don't have a high opinion of yourself, that's that's your problem right there. Well, how can how can that happen? Well, we're gonna we're gonna go on and we're gonna look and see how you can solve this problem. Because I think this is the major this is one of the major um, stumbling blocks with you in this in this situation. So we're gonna look about what you cannot change. Something that is there that you cannot change. You can change this. You can change how, you know, depend being depend on other people. You can really change that. Something that you cannot change, which is really a positive thing, is the secret of spells. And this would be the secret of spells. Now, in this deck, we do have, um, um, we have, instead of the, the core cards being um, a hierarchy of page, knight, queen, king, in this, we have, I think we have child. What do we have in this deck? One look, child, which would people sometimes think it is the equivalent of page um, seeker. Which, so would be, which would be the equivalent, perhaps, of a knight, weaver as the queen, and keeper as the king. But that's not the way it's meant in this deck. They've thrown out the hierarchy of the court cards and replaced those with with child, seeker, weaver, and keeper, meaning four different personality types, not just, um, not a hierarchy, one being greater than the other, but just a little bit different. Yes, the child is more curious and, and often just stumbles into things, but by the time we get to the seeker, this is somebody who is, um, <coughs> they have, they, they want to, they have, they're on a quest to fulfill their own initiative. Each has a quest to, quest to fulfill. Each has a desire to to achieve, an entire to accomplish, entire, and that is something you cannot you cannot change. We all have that within us, and you have this within you. The very fact that you're depressed about, um, or maybe lacking self esteem, perhaps because you depend so much on other people to feed that self esteem. This shows you that you don't have to worry about that. Okay? You have, you're motivated by your quest. That's what motivates you. You have that within you. You have this power within you. This is something that a seeker of spells knows. Okay? Because they have good instincts. Okay? They're passionate about what they want to do. And I think um, we can see that in your natal chart too, Jane, that you, um, you have that strong, you have that strong outgoing personality. That's what you have. You and other people can see that you, you know, you, you want to do things your way. You want to do things um, that you can be proud of. You want to do things that you can be proud of. You, it's fine if other people are, if other people um, appreciate it, but that's not really why you're doing it. That's really not why you're doing it. Why you're doing it is because of the drive inside you. Okay. You have a very strong need for security, and um, and you're and you're very very uh, um, sensitive. You're very sensitive to to your environment. So um, maybe even intuitive. I'm not sure. So you need to be able to follow. Look, she has her light. She 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 has her own light. She's holding her own light and going forward. We're not, nobody, even if people don't pay any attention to your achievements, they can't put out your light. You are the one that carries your own light. And that's something to, that's something to consider. That's something that's very, very important to consider in your question. Okay. Now, if we're going to look this, it, you know, the very idea of having a, a, um, quest for self-esteem or having a lack of self-esteem or lack of self-worth or whatever, um, just being feeling overall depressed, you know, um, having confidence in yourself, being doubting yourself. The fact that you that you are doubting yourself, um, it could come because of the the stage in life you're in. But often it is also. Let's just look at the let's look at the shadow. Let's look at the shadow of this card. What would the shadow of this card be? The shadow would be somebody who is impulsive, who's just following any light and not her own. And sometimes if you follow any light, not your own, not what you really want to do, you just follow what you think you should be doing, sometimes that will diminish your light. 
because not only do you not have other people that might not think that it's a good job, you yourself really is the you yourself really are the final judge. And if it does not feed your creativity, if it does not feed your pass it pass your passion, you'll become bored by it. You'll become, you know, really bored. And there's nothing more depressing than being bored with what you're doing in life. Okay. You need to take it you need to take your own passion seriously and not just be passive and let somebody else define that for you. You need to do it yourself. So light your own way and follow it. Okay. Now the final part of your question is what you might not be aware of. And I have this up here because this could be something that, um, you know, it could be a, a card that is a, you know, a, some spiritual, a lot of, lot of, uh, you know, um, messages from above or messages from beyond or whatever, you know, like spiritual, you know, self, self, you know, self-assuring uh, messages, positive reinforcing messages kind of thing. That's not what we're seeing here because we're seeing the child of boons and the child of boons is somebody, a child is almost somebody who just falls into a situation. And that's kind of an immature, even though we don't have the hierarchy in this deck, but it's kind of an immature attitude. And we see he's in the woods and let's think about it. If a grown up was in the woods, walking through the woods and was hungry and came upon a gingerbread house built in the middle of the woods, regardless of us knowing the story, would you be a little suspicious? Because I think as an adult and a grown-up, you would know that a gingerbread house does not grow in the middle of the forest naturally. There's something odd about that. But here, this young man is not even considering the oddity. He's considering, oh, yum, cookies and cakes and candies. And he's reaching out and going to nibble away at the house. Okay, we know how that turns out. Okay, so just by that very nature of the card, this is an impulsive card. It's a childish card. It's childlike. And so it is something that he's not, he's, he's not really paying attention. He's not really paying attention to maybe what he should be paying attention to. The boons being related to very much to the pentacles, to the material um, items, the, the material things, material needs that we have, you know, in our, in our lives. And when we look at that, we, we say, what are you not paying attention to? This is something you're not aware of. Are you worrying so much about this that you are, are you are um, not paying the attention that is needed to, to something else in your life? And that could be something having to do with maybe money or your own prosperity or your own security of some kind. And um, I, I, so I think in that case, this is very much a shadow card. So I'm going to put it down here as a shadow card because this is some kind of a thing that could be, that could end up to be a problem for you, Jane. And, um, do you expect what, it, where are you in your life? Do you expect others to take care of you? Do you expect, are you good at managing your money? Are you always, you know, are you always, are you as equally truthful about what you need? Um, what do you actually need? Do you actually need, you know, to do some fantastic, have a fantastic adventure? and feel great or do you or do you need to take things care of some practical things first and sometimes the knowledge that we're not taking care of what, what we our basic needs as well as we should be sometimes feeds a problem our emotional problem and I want to say that because very much so I'm again looking into your birth chart and you have a son in cancer and as a son in cancer your needs for security are everything to you and if you don't feel secure um, you you tend to withdraw or you tend to um, you know you just you, you 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 again you react emotionally to that it's an emotional reaction it's an emotional um, feeling of uh, it's the physical insecurities can lead to these emotional insecurities which cause you to reach out oh somebody tell me I'm good when maybe you just need to put more money into the bank or maybe you need to less spend spend less money. You need you need to let spend less money on frivolous things, and make sure you're taking care of your own needs. Okay, so that's a little bit of practical advice. Okay. My second reading today is for 
a young man whose name is Will. And Will, I was very moved by your question um, because you're a young man looking for your purpose in life, wondering what your purpose in life, wondering why you're so different from other people. That's part of your age, I want to say, but I'm not going to dismiss your problem. But I do want to say that's a very common question that comes up for a young man at your time of life and um, young women at, at your time of life as well, perhaps with a little different, a little bit different, but not so much. Um, it's, a, again, a sort of a shadowy question, and I was kind of really moved when you said something that really moved moved me was your statement that you you wish you were looking to shed some light. You said, I'm looking to shed some light in areas of my life that are too dark for me to see. Well, that's a perfect segue for the Shadowland Herald. And that's what I'm going to that's what I'm going to read for you today. From the Shadowland Herald, because this I love this. I love this deck for doing this kind of shadow work, which actually is what we're talking about here. Looking for, um, what did you say? Looking for the light to shine into the areas that are too dark for you to see, to look inside you. And that's exactly kind of what shadow work is. But what I like about this Shadow Land Tarot, and I've said this before in some of the videos I've done on this deck, um, you can find in my playlist, perhaps, in my, in, in my channel if you do a search. But um, that's what this is about. It's taking that because these are all the little monsters in this deck are endearing. They're loving. It's the monsters inside us, those monsters that dwell inside us that create those, those dark areas that sometimes we, we're not sure why they're there. And they can be very fearful and they can be hard and difficult to face sometimes. But the way that they're, they're drawn here in this deck, they're so endearing that you can't help but to love them. And that's the idea. You love all parts of yourself. You love the light and you love the darkness. And at this time of the year, we're all, I want to say to everybody I'm reading here for today, we all seem to have this in common. And this is what I'm working on at this point in my life too, because we're right coming up to the equinox. And it is that time we all feel that we have to get ourselves back into balance. We've got, we have this need, this tremendous need to do that, to find meaning in our life. Where are we going? And part of it is we're going into the dark part of the year like we've been going into the dark part of the year, but this is from this point on, there's more dark than light. Okay. So we're going on and, and, um, it can be scary for some, you don't want to go in carrying a lot of baggage when you go in, you want to, you want to feel secure when you're going in. So, um, that's, this deck is perfect for that kind of thing. So I asked the questions of this deck today. I asked, um, Oh, and I did do, I want to say, I did do your birth chart. And I got some good information from your birth chart. Um, but I also want to say that the questions that I'm asking, well, I'll, let me show you my, the cards that I got first, and then I'll tell you what I asked it. Okay, the questions that I'm asking today of your cards are, um, what is the situation, and what is the obstacle, and what is the lesson or advice that the cards has to have to give to you? Um, you don't see yourself as having a situation or an obstacle, perhaps, but actually, the very the very fact that you're um, you feel so different from other people, you feel this is a this is a situation. This is that's your situation that you feel so different from other people. You're not sure where you fit in, and you're not sure who you're about. Really, you don't know. Um, why you're why you're the way you are, and the obstacle is is um, the obstacle that we see here is um, is this fact that is the fact that if you don't you don't know where to go, you don't know what direction to take. You're not you're just unsure of of your of your um, way forward. And then finally, we have the advice coming from the card, pretty self-explanatory. So that's how I settled on this reading for you. And I will start here with the Queen of Cups, and this is she's precious, isn't she? <laughs> um, and this is exactly exactly what she is. Um, it is a mature, it represents a mature, which is the Queen, mature, feminine energy. And Will, I know you're not a, you're a male, very much a male, but this is another good lesson to learn for Tarot that in Tarot the courts do not represent um, gender, actual gender of the querent. 
they represent the gender of the energy, the gender of the energy. And the queen is the nurturing energy. It is that nurturing, it is that creative energy. Um, it is self-expressive energy. That is the feminine energy. That's what we mean. So this is all about that creative energy. And here she is standing there. She's singing her little heart out. She's just singing, <laughs> singing. Um, it says here the description and enjoying a moment by the sea seaside. She is singing a tune and represents creative self-expression and the mature feminine energy. And that's what exactly we're talking about. And this is something that right away we can see if this is the situation, we're talking about a young man, a very young man, and this is very mature feminine energy. So um, it might infer, it probably does infer that you're much more mature than you than you think or that other people might even think or you're young or maybe you're just not mature enough. You have you have this creative urge, you have this, ten this creative desire, but perhaps you're just not experienced enough to take it. So maybe it's a matter of time. Maybe it's just a matter of this is going to, some of this will correct. Some of your issues will correct with time as your, as your physical age and your physical maturity um, catch up with your emotional and creative energy and maturity, if that makes any kind of sense. But that's very common in a lot of people, especially people that have, that show some kind of, um, uh, any kind of creativity or artistic abilities, those kind of things. So that that could be the case with you. It could just be the expressions that your your expressions, your knowledge, your 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 feminine, your intuitive knowledge. Maybe you're an intu maybe you're an intuitive, maybe you're an empath. And again, that's going to be something that's going to develop as you get, as you get older. You're going to see a lot of that um, developing. Okay. So um, when I was looking into your birth chart, I saw that you are um, somebody who is um, um, very um, very focused on, on the details of things, very very much focused on um, perhaps the details, perhaps your health or perhaps your environment or your, you know, your, your cleanliness, your neatness, maybe you're a neat person. Um, you could be, you like things to be the way they are, you like things a certain way. Uh, again, those are tendencies that that have to do with usually somebody that's a much more mature person. It's not the typical of a young person. So this shows a greater maturity maybe that, you know, in that area too. But the question that I would say to you that in the situation here we want to ask is, are you so focused in on the details that you're losing sight of um, the larger things, things that are the bigger issues? Are you worried too much about all the little differences you may have with other people and not worried enough about where you want to go in your life, where you should be going in your life. We have a tendency when we're around other people to compare ourselves all the time. And we do that even as an old woman, I still compare myself. I have to remind myself, that's not my story, that's your story. But I, I you know, we just have a tendency, a tendency to do that. And I just want to point out this Queen of Cups. Look at her, she's singing, she's looking up and she's focusing on her song, but she's really not looking around her. And her song, she's, you know, she's going upward. She's going really far upward. And um, not really, she's not sending her, she's not sharing her song with, with others around her. She's just, for the purpose of singing it, she's singing. Okay. So um, this is representative, too, of somebody who is not really focused, not having a direction, perhaps, of where they want to take this creative creative energy. Okay. So I want to say to you at this point, um, your attention to details and, and things and and um, but your lack of focus forward uh, looking at maybe the larger picture is sort of a dichotomy which they even express in this in the um, explanation of this card in the in the book here. It uses the um, statement somewhere, um, something like it's a, they talked about it's a combination of the introvert hiding behind the locked doors and the extrovert who's, who likes the attention. And um, 
right away that's that that's going to cause some kind of an internal conflict with you if that's the case with you you have gifts that you can share but yet you're you know you're you're, you're hesitant to do it you're hesitant to do so because perhaps maybe you're again thinking that people are going to judge you and um i know one thing there's a lot of people that judge us whether we want to be judged or not i've been judged my whole life by a lot of people but i want to tell you something that the judge has never has never um made any any difference in my life it's never it's never made a significant difference if somebody approves or disapproves of my action i can tell you it really doesn't if it's somebody who would disapprove of you because it's something that you do something you do for a living or something that you do you know with whatever your creative expression or your expression of love or whatever it is if it's somebody who's going to disapprove of you because of that that's somebody that you really don't need to have approval of in the first place we don't do things like that because of the approval. We should not. I spoke a little bit about that in the last in the last reading that I just did. We to, for Jane that we did not want to. Uh, we can't do things for other people. We have to do them for ourselves, and that's the situation here with you too. Okay. Um, it talks about yes, this this indication of her posturing here as she's singing. Yes, to be brave, to pull inside you. And just to be brave and not to worry about being in the spotlight. There's nothing wrong with being in the spotlight. But you know, I want to tell you one thing. I know the nature of people too. You can be in the spotlight today and tomorrow people will go somewhere else and put somebody else in the spotlight. That's just what people do. Okay. So we want you to listen to your own instincts. We want you to listen to what you're feeling and then express yourself the way that you feel that you should. Okay. Now, I don't know if you're an empath or not, but if you're an empath again, I'm going to tell you that it's something that's going to, you're going to grow into. I'm seeing that in my own daughter. She did not show any signs of being an empath until recent years, and it's growing for her as the years go by. And I can see that developing. She's learning to handle a little better than she first could. Okay. Um, are you a, a creative person? If you're a creative person, you know, sing your songs, write your stories you know, dance your dance, right? Um, but um, do not worry about being judged. Do not worry about being judged. Okay, that's where we're going to go. We're going to start there. So that is about the situation, this whole situation of getting a grasp on your um, creative expression. Secondly, the second card here is the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands is going to answer it for us the question of what is the obstacle? And oh, we don't see this cute little witch and her little cat floating up in the air. Okay. We can see her so clearly. She doesn't seem like she has any obstacles at all. Um, she, she, uh, <laughs> she represents people that have stood apart from the crowd. And that's so interesting in your reading because you feel yourself that you have stood apart in the crowd. And that's exactly who she is. But she has done that mentally. But yet, she refuses to be bullied. That's her position in the card. She refuses. She's rising above it. She's rising above it. She's using her power, her energy, to rise above it. And her little cat is going with her, <laughs> which I think is so sweet. Um, it's about standing your ground, being grounded. And, you know... That's what you need to do. This this is your obstacle. This is where you need to to be. Are you being forced to be defensive? Do you feel that you're being judged because of your um I'm not sure what your what your um your religion, your choice of religion or your choice of sexuality or or why you don't conform with the person next door or have the same kind of job as the people as people expect as um expect you to have. I have watched I think on Netflix every every little documentary time, um, episode of all kinds of shows all for the last year or so on all kinds of people who have um, sought out a way to express themselves creatively or their sought out careers that their family, even some of them were disowned by their family because of it and they achieved great success and their family came around in the end. <laughs> um, so you can't take it too seriously when you you need to stand your ground. You need to stand your ground. Okay. You don't have to be the same as other people. 
I want to tell you a secret. Nobody is the same. Everybody has differences. It's just some people are better at hiding their differences from others. And the people that are really good at hiding their differences are usually, usually the people who are the most insecure. I'm afraid for you to see my differences, so I'm going to appear that I am just like you, even though I probably am not. That's the mentality a lot of people have. You need to rise above that, and you need to be you. Sing your song. Sing your song. And you will get the maturity. Again, it might be difficult at this point in time in your age, okay? But stand your ground. Make sure other people understand what your boundaries are, okay? And if you cannot get the support from the people who are around you, you need to find new people to be around, <laughs> okay? She has her little cat with her. She doesn't have anybody else with her, but she's got her little cat. You don't need a lot of people to support you. You need, you know, it's important to have somebody to support you, but it doesn't have to be a big crowd of people. It doesn't have to be everybody. Everybody is not going to like everything you do. That's just, that's just a life lesson. That's a life lesson, okay? Remember that you are strong and your opinion matters. Be proud. Be proud of the this nonconformity that you have. Be proud because it is a sign. As immature as you may be in years or as in, in experiences, being proud of your how you are different from others is being proud in your uniqueness. Being proud proud of your of your um of your uniqueness, how you are special, your own special self. And that is boy if we could all be if we could all have that blessing, how great we would be. How great we'd be, okay? Um, what is it that you're defending? You know, this is the other thing I want you to point. I want to point out to you. What is it that you're exactly defending? Because are you really defending all of your everything in your life? Your sensuality, your sexuality, your religion, your job, your lifestyle. Is it everything? Your food choices. You know. You know. We're today. People are so critical. I don't know what it is. Maybe people have too much time on their hands. But, you know, people are critical of everybody. They're critical of the way they dress, the way they look, the way they eat, the way they drive, the way they, you know, people are just lashing out. And usually it's a it's a symptom of their own instability that they do that, that they try to bring others down, take the legs out from under other people so that they're all on the same shaky ground. You need to stand your ground or, if possible, rise above the ground. Seek higher ground. Seek a different ground. <laughs> if that makes sense. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, find somebody that you can talk to. Find somebody that you can talk to. If you can't find anybody in your circle, find a new circle. If you want to be a tap dancer, look look for tap dancers. If you want to be a singer, look for singers. Okay. It doesn't mean you have to be exclusively a singer or exclusively a tap dancer or exclusively a uh, Catholic or whatever it is you want to be. But, but you know, it helps to have some people in your corner in that part of your life. It helps. It'll help. Okay. And you don't have to tell everybody everything. <laughs> I've also learned that. I said, you don't have to tell everybody. You don't owe everybody an explanation as to why your bedroom is green. It's nobody's business. It's nobody's business that you that you don't eat broccoli. It's nobody's business, you know. It's just nobody's business. Maybe you paint your toenails. If people don't like it, put on a pair of socks and don't tell them. You know who cares? Who just cares? Nobody. You just have to get over this caring too much because other people will bring you down. And that feeling, I have a sense. I have a feeling that other people have brought you down and brought you to this place. Because of your youth, perhaps it's exaggerated because when you're young, people, everybody wants to tell you what to do. Everybody wants to tell you how to live your life. Because you know why? People have learned, made mistakes in their lives, and for the people they love, they don't want those people to make the same mistakes they did. But I'll tell you, I'm a, I'm a parent of three, of three children. They have to make their own mistakes. They can't learn from mine. They cannot learn from my mistakes. They have to make their own. I can worry about them, and I can't change their life, and I can't live their life for them. The same goes for you, Will. Okay. Now I want to look at what is the lesson advice. Although I've just given you a lot of lessons and advice, 
I don't, I was just part of being a crone, I guess I did. But we have the Page of Swords, and the Page of Swords is also, um, she, she is flying, she's also flying high, just like the Seven of Wands. Um, she's so full of energy. <laughs> she's trying out her skill, okay, and she's letting other people know her power. She's flying over, flying over this little town. I don't think you can see it down here. But there's a little town down there. And she's flying over to show people that she has power. This is the lesson. Show your power. Fly your colors. Okay. Um, this is all about developing. This is all about growing and becoming that 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 um dynamic, you know, your skill, developing your skills, right? Um The page urges you to take a chance and try out a way of expressing yourself. Maybe a new way of expressing yourself that you never have. Maybe part of your reason that you're feeling um, like you don't have a purpose is that you have not done enough exploring. I see from your birth chart that you're very, um, you don't like to change. You don't like change, a lot of change. Um, you like the familiar. You have a, your emotional need. Are better, you're better, you feel better if things are familiar, if things are patterned, you know, the patterns that you've set in your life from a very young age. Uh, you like, you have your, your emotions set as, as a very young person. That's another, you know, I keep coming into the um, stereotype, I don't mean to say it, but stereotype of, we would say as men get older, they get set in their ways. It was always the man, the men that we, for some reason, it was believed men were easier set in their ways than women for some reason. I'm not sure why. When we think of the bachelor, the aging bachelor who lived by himself for a long time, I think the deal was that he he didn't want to have a partner, find a partner to live with because he was so used to doing things his way. He didn't want another person coming in and 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 changing that. That's a that's sort of a male a male trait more so than in, than a woman's trait. Usually that's a stereotype, but it's very common. Um, this is like maybe that's one thing that's keeping you back. This thing that you were more secure if things are always the way they are. And maybe if you branch out and look into a new direction to fly, a new um, way that you can express yourself in a new way, that um, you might feel more secure about that. You might benefit from that rather than just trying to, to redefine the old ways. Okay. And this, again, is something that's going to take time. This is at the beginning. The pages, remember, are at the beginning of the journey. They're just starting out. They're getting, they're going out, trying things for the first time. They have not mastered it. It's not just something you're going to master. It's something that you're going to explore. So be, 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 try, try to do that. Now, the shadow of this card would be if you are um, just, you're, la you're just lashing out in inexperienced ways. You're being impulsive. You're just trying to do things in a childish or an awkward way. No, this is get the thought first. Remember, Page of Swords has to do with thinking. Think it through. Think about it, what it is that you, you really like to do, and then give it a try. Remembering, of course, that it's going to have to develop along the way. Perhaps if you start to show, as you age, you're going to see that you're going to show mastery in different areas, more so than you maybe do now at a young age. I don't want to patronize you about being young, but it's, it's really a basic truth of our society that we tend to take people less, a little less serious when they're a little more youthful. Um, as you get more developed in your, more mature as example, in your um, creativities, in your creative creative expressions, whether they're your, your um, art or your music or your, or it could be your job if you're very passionate, like a career, it, has, it would be your career. You're going to get a little more respect and your people are not going to judge you so much. You know, people will not judge you so much. People are always kinder to people who, and less judgy, <laughs> less judgy than to people who are a little more mature and have gained respect in their field or in their art or in their lifestyle. Okay, be patient. Just be patient. Be patient and be kind to yourself. For heaven's sakes, be kind to yourself. Okay, I hope that helped you. I don't hope it wasn't too much of my own blathering. <laughs> but thank you so much, Will, and good luck to you. If you have any more questions, please feel free to contact me anytime. Okay, my third um, my third reading today is for someone named 
Laurie. And Laurie, um, again, is somebody who is looking for passion and joy in life. Oh, she just needs it so badly. <laughs> we all do. She um, doesn't go out as much as she used to since, since, um, since COVID. She's been confined to her house. It works from her house. So she doesn't have the, she doesn't maybe have the contact with other people that she used to have. It's maybe a little bit diminished. I think a lot of people are going through this kind of situation. But at any rate, it's kind of, things are kind of leaving your flat right now. So she, so we're going to see what kind of help we can get from her. And I'm doing something a little different. I have had, I'm using a deck I have not used before. I like the deck a lot, but one of the reasons I haven't used it is it might be a little hard to see because the imagery is so, um, subtle it, it's watercolors and it's hard i'm going to try my best i think they have a good message for you laurie so um if you can't see them i apologize i'll do my best but if you can't see i apologize i just want you to know that um the reason behind me i'm selecting this deck for you and the deck i'm using today is called spirit song spirit song tarot okay and it's just beautiful little it's beautiful little um watercolors of the animals in, and I want to just tell you a little bit about the deck before I start, if I could. Um, it talks about the deck as a melding of two traditions, one where animals are seen as spiritual helpers between our world and the spirit world, and also then one of the one that uses the seventy-eight cards as a tool to connect with our highest self. Okay, it's it's kind of based on the same structure of the Rider Waite. We have a little bit of different. Um, the names for the suits, the elementals are the elementals are the same, but they're named a little bit different. Fire is acorns rather than wands, symbolizing growth, strength, and limited potential. Okay, um, feathers in place of the air, representing the air energy, symbolizing power, freedom, and celestial wisdom. Shells in place of the, representing the water element, um, symbolizing harmony, peace, and fertility. And then finally, crystals, quartz crystals, um, for the element of earth, symbolizing manifestation, clarity, and abundance. So it's a little bit, a little bit different, which I find kind of interesting. But I want to talk to you about the animals a minute. The animals that they use. The cards all have animal energy, and um, it says connected to the portals. Of higher worlds, the 78 spirit song animals are mentors of divine guidance, bearing their own shamanic medicines. They're forever open to providing their energy when called upon. They're always available to you and for you to help you attain your greatest potential. If you ask, they will provide guidance needed to assist you in finding the best remedy for any situation. The animals are a reflection of the true inner self and they offer their courage to you as you endeavor to meet your goals. I thought that was a really sweet, um, gentle energy, which I thought would be really nice for Laurie today to see if I could answer her question. So I'm going to change my camera and show you, but whatever it is, I'm asking her, um, I'll, I'll explain what I'm asking, what I ask the cards are, first of all. But, but I wanna say, I did a birth chart for you, Laurie, and um, I found your sun and moon easily. The rising sign is what is more dependent on the time of your birth. You weren't quite sure of. But we did some, find a little bit of commonalities between the two. So I don't think it's going to be an issue at all. Um, when I go to, if I apply that to your energies at all, I'm not sure. Um, okay, so anyway, without further ado, I'm going to change my camera. And I'm going to show you what I asked the cards. I first want to say I, I laid down a, a purple outer cloth over my table here just because I thought that might help. The contrast with that color might help you see the cards a little better. I want to say that first of all. Second of all, new deck shuffled, 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 shuffled. When I was first left shuffling the deck, this card fell out at me, which I was, you know, okay. But I tucked it back in because I thought I'm not really shuffled yet. It fell out again, and then ultimately when I shuffled, and my husband shuffled, I shuffled, we both shuffled, we were shuffling, shuffling, trying to get them as mixed as we possibly could. And what came up again? The same card. So I think this is a card of interest for you a lot. I want to put a focus on that. Even though we don't have a focus in the center of this reading, I want to tell you 
I find this card to be very um, important. It really wanted you to see it. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do is going to see it. Okay, let me turn these over. You can't see the. There you go. We don't need to see anybody else. Okay. So I asked the three cards a basic what is in your head? What is your head telling you? What is your heart telling you? And then what about your spirit? What about your spirit? How can we, you know, what is what is the lesson from your spirit? Okay. Or what is best for your spirit? However, we want to read it. Okay. So first of all, we want to look at the head. And oh, I really hope you can see it's a boar. It's the boar. A little boar. And it's called the Knight of Acorns. And underneath is a caption that says action and drive. Okay. Now the wands are all about, I just told you about the growth and the strength and the unlimited potential. And this is your head energy, Laurie. This is in your head. Okay. And it talks about, I want to talk in just a couple of seconds about your, about your birth chart. So a sun in Scorpio, extreme emotional reactions to most situations, but difficulty verbalizing your feelings. Um, so this is, and I can picture, I picture the boar running straight ahead, huh, running straight ahead, ready to jump into action, but maybe not um, without much, much explanation to those around you. Okay. And I see that you are also, you like, you like relationships, but you don't like casual relationships. You're not very attracted to um, it's just common casual friends. You don't need to have a lot out. And as a matter of fact, if you are challenged, you tend to lash out. It's very much that boar energy in you, I can see, according to your sun sign. Um, also, hair trigger reactions in your moon and Aries, um, sometimes you get into trouble. Being, your independence might get you into trouble. You might be a little bit reckless, reckless running forward in a reckless situation. We have the boar, and then we have the nine of wands in the right of weight. He's all dressed up. He's raring to go. The horse is up on his back legs. He's ready. He hasn't gone yet, but boy, he's ready to go. He's all fired up. So it's in the head. It's still in the head. All ready to go. All ready to go forward, but perhaps not prepared to go. Okay. Now, or not, for whatever reason, you're not going. And this card says, according to this, the, 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 um, the author, if you are frustrated by indecision, you want to take time to consider the path you want to take before jumping in. You are motivated with the fact that you're going to have a victory. Okay. But you need to focus on how to manifest them. It's not enough to just get all dressed up, ready to go, and to be raring to go. You need to go. You need to go. And that's the action. Whatever you want to do, you need to... You need to be able to take that head action, that head energy, and move it forward. Okay. Now, secondly, I, it says, we don't want you to, we want to be very cautious. And we say you can be emotionally triggered very easily. Um, you don't, you can have some high, some um, triggers, hair trigger reactions. You don't want to focus on emotional triggers. You want to keep a clear head. And you want to move forward. You don't want to move forward out of fear or out of desperation. You want to move forward from ideas. Focus on the ideas and move forward from there. Okay. Find out what that enthusiasm is and then you follow it. That's what the head energy says. Okay. Now we go into the heart energy. And this is the card that, that came falling out of the deck for you. The three of acorns. And it's represented here by the sweetest giraffe. I hope you can see that. Um, and the and the inscription below says foresight and exploration exploration um, and um, the the giraffe brings you the gift of higher perception and oh I love that I love that so much because um, it sort of reminds me of the crow, crow energy that I work with all the time the crows perched high above their on the top of the cypress very tall cypress trees beside me looking down and having a vantage point of seeing everything from up there you can see for, you can see a big distance the giraffe has the same advantage being up high rising above a situation and looking down below and that's the hard energy that we have for you today Laurie um, she can see what's coming she can see 
what lies on the horizon. So set yourself on the path ahead and consider, thoughtfully consider where your path is headed. And again, cautioning against the rec reckless action. Also against the tendency to go within when you get broody, when you get, um, when you have difficulties to some situations, difficult situations, send you in. Rise above it. Rise above those difficult situations and look beyond and focus on your path to manifest what it is you wish to do. Okay? That's where your passion is. We get down, if we're down inside it, down inside, buried down in, in down inside our, our feelings of um, sadness or depression or isolation or boredom or, you know, you know, um, tedious living or, or just, you know, the mundane, the mundane, uh, un unexciting, you know, the unexciting events. We get buried in those sometimes. The draft tells you to feel it in your heart, to think about it, to think good. And the draft says, now take that and look above, rise above your situation. Look beyond, look out ahead. And that's your path that you take. Your path is not going to be taken buried in all the mundane, buried in all the stuff that you have um, that is suffocating you right now. Okay. So a lot of people have, this happens to a lot of people who work really hard. We have to work really hard. We have to take care of ourselves. But sometimes we get so get built up in our work, our work becomes our life. And our work is not our life. It doesn't matter what your work is. Your work can be very meaningful and very, you know, fulfilling, etc. But that's not your life. The job, the job is an is a tool is a tool to enable you to enjoy life. It is not life in itself. And so many of us just get stuck and bogged down by our life that we don't do anything else. And if you're in your Zoom meetings all the time with your work, okay, you need to make sure that when you're not doing your your work, you're doing something. You're reaching out. There's people. Even if it's on Zoom, you can reach out and have people. You can make friendships. But the giraffe says, um, set your sights on the path ahead and then go towards it. Okay. Finally, we have in the last one, the spirit, the spirit. And oh, I love this. It's so hard to see. Oh, how I can turn it. Maybe if you can see that way. Is that better? Can you see that way? The, cuddles, the, the colors are so subtle, but this is the Queen of Feathers. The Queen of Feathers is all about um, the power, the freedom, and the celestial wisdom. And the subtitle here is Perception and Truth. Perception and Truth. And it's the bat. Very beautiful little bat. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Maybe you can see that better. Beautiful, beautiful little bat. Um, and the most beautiful... Beautiful um, quote in this Franken got from the description was to confront the darkness and you'll discover the reawakening of light. Confront the darkness and you will discover the reawakening of light. The bat carries her light with her. She's able to go through the darkness by using radar, sense of radar that she has. You don't have radar, Laurie, but you do have wisdom from your experiences. You have wisdom from your life experiences. Some of those were painful experiences, but you, you taught lessons from them. You know how to pull yourself out. You know how to move forward. Follow your light. Follow your own light. Okay? Stand above the situation the giraffe is telling you. Stand above. Heighten the force of clarity and truth you see. Maintain balance. Again, we're coming up again to the same energies that I'm seeing with other people today. Getting ourselves into balance. Don't work too much. You got to take some time to play. And I'll give you some practical advice. I'm going to give you practical advice, okay? Because this is what this is what I do as a crown. <laughs> but um, people that work, the happiest people are people that work all day, work all day, and come home and knit, or come home and sing, or come home and dance, or come home and do art, or come home and um, garden, or whatever they do. Because it is through those gifts, those creative things that they do, that they are able to balance. They're able to balance themselves. And it is through those things that they're able to find the joy, find the creativity, find the passion. Look at your life, Laurie. Look at your life. Okay? 
you're not going to find your you're not going to find your passion in your head. You're going to find your passion in your heart by looking rising above and looking out what is in your heart and then doing it, actually doing it. Maneuvering through the darkness by knitting, maneuvering through the darkness by dancing, maneuvering through the darkness by gardening. Okay? Whatever it is, baking pies, whatever it is you do, that's how you find your joy. That is how you find your joy. It's not you it's not buried. It it for some people it remains buried underneath all the daily life, day, daily life things. Dig it out. Rise above that and and follow your heart.